Hello and welcome to this week's program of the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley. Each week we connect with and hear uh, from fascinating and inspirational speakers, often with a message focused on our interests of innovation, entrepreneurship, and education. As a Rotary Club, we look for ways for these programs might foster new approaches to improving communities near and far. And we're glad, we're glad that you joined us today and that we hope you enjoy how we are exploring uh, how technology can serve the business and service of others. This week, we welcome Emily Paver, who is uh, going to talk to us about the Guatemala Literacy Project. So, hand it over to you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you for having me today. Uh, my name is Emily Paver, and I work with the Guatemala Literacy Project. Uh, with help from many Rotarians like you, the Guatemala Literacy Project, or GLP, as I'll abbreviate, was founded in 1996 to address the high rates of poverty and low rates of literacy in Guatemala. Though I'll admit progress has been made, two out of every three children still drop out of school by the sixth grade, simply because their parents cannot afford to send them. This is a key driver behind the widespread poverty throughout the country. This is Wendy. Uh, Wendy is one of our students in our RISE program. Uh, families from all over Guatemala have to choose whether they send their students to school or pay for their groceries. So we know that they value their students' um, well-being, their education, their happiness, and overall future, but they simply do not have the options to provide all of those things at once, sometimes none of them at all. So once students reach middle school like Wendy, uh, public education is no longer free. And so the older they get, the more valuable their help becomes at home with their siblings or with farming, any type of manual labor. So students like Wendy now have to stay at home and are no longer provided an education past fifth or sixth grade. So at the GLP, uh, we work to give these families options. A little bit more about who we are and what we do. Uh, the GLP is a partnership between Rotary and COED, our partner organization, uh, to promote literacy in Guatemala. We call it a perfect marriage <laughs> because together we are, have been able to do some really amazing things. So here is our impact worldwide. We call it our GLP family. The GLP is one of the largest grassroots, multi-club, multi-district pro projects in Rotary. Over the past 20 years, the project has included uh, 608 Rotary clubs and counting, uh, 80 districts, 46 US states, and eight overall countries. We know that no one Rotarian can change the world, but our power comes from acting collectively. So this is the impact that we have made working together. 207,000 students have benefited from our GLP programs alone in 22 years. Uh, in Cincinnati, we like to compare that to our great American ball ballpark, the Cincinnati Reds, who have not been doing so great. <laughs> but uh, we could fill that ballpark four times over with the amount of students that have benefited from our programs. So I'll talk about our programs in detail in a moment, but we have 203 textbook programs, 84 Spark reading programs, 50 computer centers, and 729 RISE scholars. In total, 54,000 students will be affected in this year alone. So I'll talk a little bit about our Spark reading program, which is at the primary school level. This program is necessary because one third of indigenous Guatemalans cannot read or write. They are completely illiterate. And one question that I like to ask is, why is literacy so important? Literacy is crucial to all later learning in life. So if you go back and imagine if you had never learned how to read in elementary school, you would have never been able to succeed in any other subject because being able to understand the content is completely based on literacy of the language. And many of these students actually speak Spanish as a second language because they are indigenous Maya. So they live in the mountains, the Western Highlands, and they speak tribal languages that we once learned about in our own history classes. And so they now a lot of times translate for their parents and they come to school and try to learn um, in a second language and don't have textbooks to learn from. So one thing in our program is we provide those textbooks that encourage a love of reading. Here's one of my favorite pictures of a teacher holding up a book and showing the pictures. 
one of our co-founders, when he first went into the classrooms 22 years ago, he noticed that they had very few books and the teachers were not taught how to use them. So they would sit in front of the class and just hold the book in front of them and read to themselves. They wouldn't show the pictures. They didn't know how to actively engage the students. And so our SPARK program actually teaches the teachers how to instruct. So we provide two years of teacher training in a rich classroom library of an average of 150 books, picture books, um, books in Spanish and in their Maya language if available so that they learn how to love to read as opposed to it being more of a burden. So these teachers who oftentimes only have graduated from high school themselves, they don't get any higher education training, they learn over a hundred new strategies to engage their students in the reading pro process over two years. This sets the stage for deeper learning in our textbook program, which is at the middle school level. 90% of rural students in Guatemala don't have access to textbooks. And I cannot imagine what it would have been like going through school without simply any textbooks to, to work off of. So providing those textbooks and ensuring that the teachers are engaged and prepared are the top two ways to improve the quality of education in the developing world. And the GLP provides both of those things. When you provide books to a classroom, the impact really cannot be disputed. If you don't have textbooks, students simply have to copy all day. Their teacher writes everything on the blackboard that they have and maybe a printed out handbook that they've had for years. And the students copy, copy, copy. And by the time the school day is over, they haven't learned anything. They just have a bunch of words on a piece of paper that, that don't mean anything. So we provide resources so that they can actually engage with their teacher and collaborate. So pro by providing these textbooks to a teacher, we give them back a quarter of their class time. So kids who receive textbooks score significantly higher on national standardized tests than kids who do, who do not. This is one of my favorite pictures. So our program solution is providing textbooks to these schools in four subject areas, math, science, social studies, and the Spanish language. And guess who helps bring us those books? Rotarians like you help us deliver these life-changing books in person. I would love to learn about who has ever traveled to Guatemala before or would be interested. <laughs> One of our other projects is at the middle school level, our computer program. 60% of jobs in Guatemala require the use of a computer. So the problem is, is that most kids in rural areas um, or even urban areas have never had the opportunity to use, let alone see a computer. And 60% of those jobs will go to other people. With our program, which gives 100 lessons over three years, kids graduate with great technical skills. So 95% of those students find jobs with the new skills and continue their education in high school, which is an astounding number. If all we did though was just show up in a community with a pickup truck, drop a bunch of books and computers off, uh, these programs would not be sustainable. And one thing in Rotary that we're passionate about is sustainability. So after the initial investment from the GLP, which is often provided through a global grant, these programs become 100% self-sustaining. So after five years in our textbook rental program for $1 every year, enough annual fees have reaccumulated for the schools to buy back brand new replacement books and computers. So over 22 years, we have had more than 100 schools renew their textbooks, computers, or both. And the, the fee for each student for, for a book is about $1.50 a month, which would be about seven quetzales um, in Guatemalan currency, and about $3 or 21 quetzales a month for computers. And our final program is our RISE Youth Development uh, for middle and high school. This begins at sixth grade when public education is no longer free. So we go and find students who are in dire need and bring them into our program. Since 95% of students do not graduate high school in Guatemala, they're already set back for the trajectory of their life. So I know that many of us <laughs> have careers in education, law, architecture, business, you name it. And we, if we had not graduated high school, we would not be where we are today. So these students in Guatemala 
need a high school degree to break the cycle of poverty. But 95% of those kids in poor rural areas that never graduate because they're facing not only poverty, but they're facing abuse, teen pregnancy, alcoholism, gang violence, and drugs. So the RISE program selects students who are about to drop out of school, and we then skyrocket their graduation rate to 80%. So how is this possible? The RISE program is more than just a scholarship. We offer much more than just handing them money. The RISE pro program offers uh, training and career prep, leadership skills, financial planning, and even workshops about self-esteem and uh, human rights. Uh, this photo is one of our students practicing an interview actually in front of a crowd. So before she had never even held a microphone, let alone spoke in front of a crowd. So one of our local facilitators here on the left is interviewing her so that she's ready to go out into the workplace and provide for her family. Students also directly um, are directly and socially uh, supported from our psychological staff um, of mentors and li licensed psychologists. Here's Wendy, the, the young woman in the middle is from the first photo. She's with two of our local facilitators and uh, they serve as an inspiration to keep these kids going in school because a lot of times no one really believed in them. So these people who have careers are believing in them to have a career of their own. And finally, we encourage our RISE scholars to give back. Many of them, once they graduate high school, um, go back and have a senior project in their own community to give back and create sustainable change there, which is the whole point of equipping the communities to help themselves. This photo is one of our very first RISE scholars, Anselma Ortiz. She graduated from high school back in 2012. This is Anselma here on the left with her mother and her grandmother. You can see them in the traditional traje, which is their clothing that they hand weave. It takes months to make one of these shirts, which is called a weep heel. Um, and they're absolutely beautiful, but you can imagine the time that's put into it. Uh, grandma here on the right, she is illiterate and desperately poor. Anselma's mother in the middle, illiterate, desperately poor. And Selma, she has graduated from high school and is now paying her way through college. She's working at a call center and she now makes four times that of her father. So now her future children and descendants will no longer need a scholarship to be able to finish school. They will be able to break the cycle of poverty in that family through education, which is our entire mission. And actually just this October, and Selma was invited to represent our organization at the 2019 Obama Summit, where she spent time with Mich Michelle Obama and the Girls Opportunity Alliance to discuss sol solutions for a brighter future for girls in education. So it was pretty amazing. One cool part of our project is that we welcome any and all volunteers to come visit Guatemala with us and see our programs in person, uh, meet our amazing students and feel the impact that education has in Guatemala. Here are honestly just a few of thousands of photos of Rotarians who have traveled to volunteer with the GLP in Guatemala. When former Rotary International President Ian Riceley came to visit, local Rotarians in Guatemala chose to highlight the GLP. And after seeing our work firsthand, he called the GLP the gold standard of Rotary projects. So here's the big question. How can you and your club help more students like Wendy and Anselma? The two key ways that I'll say today is by continuing to talk more about what I've shared with you today and asking questions, but also you can learn more about specifically sponsoring a student that I've mentioned and helping them support uh, their education financially through graduation. Thank you so much and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, thank you. So what I'll do is I'll, if you'll uh, stop sharing, I'll, I'll mm -hmm. introduce the other team members and then we can definitely get on these questions. Awesome. Um, uh, thank you very much. It was, that, was, mm -hmm. that was awesome. Uh, and you. I really appreciated the, the presentation because it really was dynamic, which was very cool. Thanks. Um, uh, I want to introduce uh, Rory, uh, is from Houston, and Shags, who is sitting in Walnut Creek, California. And Originally myself, from Youngstown. 
Yeah. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> and, and myself, Nick Lagarde, also sitting in Vancouver, British Columbia. So uh, anybody have a question? Just a comment. That's an excellent presentation and a Thank fabulous you. program. Thank I, you very I, much. That means a lot. I've been lot. watching all the different Rotary literacy programs since I joined Rotary in 82. Yeah, it's just, it's wonderful to see how they just keep growing and, and working. It works. Thank you. Especially Thank when, you. We're, when we're in the weeds every day, um, so to speak, we love hearing from the Rotary Network because it truly is dedicated to service. So when we have people on the outside who recognize what we do, it, it, it really helps. So thank, so thank you. you. Thank you. Roy, do you have any questions? Because I, I, I have a couple, but I want to make sure that... Oh, okay. No, I, I don't have any questions except to say that I was very impressed with your program and your presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, I, I saw that, you know, we, you, have, you have a number of volunteers um, and you also have uh, uh, obviously clubs that are just supporting financially. Um, you, you mentioned uh, a, a couple of things. Uh, one is that uh, you can sponsor, uh, like, a, is it that you sponsor through the RISE program for child? Is that what you mentioned? What, Correct. what is that typically like uh, for a uh, club? So, um, the RISE program starts at the sixth grade where uh, the students no longer can afford to go. So whether at sixth grade when they enter the program or sometimes the, they'll enter the program without a sponsor. So we'll accept students that are in great need without a matching sponsor yet. So for $80 a month, um, I think it would be 100 Canadian. Um, that pays for all of their tuition, their fees, their textbooks, uniform, psychological um, and academic support. Nice. And so you can do that monthly or annually. You can split it um, with a friend or a club. And so we have a student, um, I can actually send you a bio later as an example that has their photo, it has their story, um, where they come from, their favorite things to do, their favorite favorite subjects and um, you can actually communicate with them. You can send us a letter and we'll translate it into Spanish oh, cool. and then send it to them and you can communicate with them all the way through graduation. We actually have some people that will go and visit them in person yeah. or attend their graduation, oh, um, cool. which is really special. I, I assume that you, you, you know, there's never a lack for uh, someone in need. So it's, I assume that uh, no matter how many you can, you can, you have the spons sponsors, there's always more children that need to be sponsored. Yes. Yeah. Um, go ahead. I, I just, I was thinking about, uh, you, you mentioned the other thing was about fee structure. I, I didn't quite understand. I, I, but I guess, so there's schools that are getting the books and it's sustaining, like you said, that once you have yes. the initial input of the books, there's a sustaining fee that then allows them to keep keep renewing the, like refreshing the books? What yeah. exactly, like, so is it the schools that are paying at that point? Like, how does it work exactly? Yeah, I'll, I'll break that down some more. So um, the, the global grant provides the, the first installment or the, the brunt of the money to provide all of the books. And so um, we provide the textbooks to the school and then families actually will pay into like a revolving fund um, that like a dollar a month. So um, it's a very small fee. And so that money accumulates and each year there's, an, there's enough to um, save up essentially for $1 um, for each student. And so after five years, we have $5 accumulated to them buy those new textbooks. So it isn't the school necessarily unless um, the family cannot provide it for some extenuating circumstance, yeah. but um, they buy into the program and then the school and then our program manage it. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, and the one other thing I was curious about is you, you showed pictures of the, the people that are working in Guatemala. And so I assume that you guys, well, you are, you are in Ohio, Cincinnati, and you're, you guys have a team that is permanently uh, in Guatemala as well. How big is the, the team? Because I can imagine with all those, with the numbers you gave us, it's got to be uh, what I would imagine quite large. Yeah, so we've grown monumentally in the last 22 plus years. Um, here in Cincinnati, Ohio is our development office. So that's where I'm based most of the time. And we have a staff of about 12 to 15 at any um, given time. And then our, our main on the ground workers, we have um, 50 employees in Guatemala um, in San Lucas, which is just outside of Guatemala City. And right. so they are the ones who run a tight ship. Yeah. They're doing a 
amazing things. They are the ones that do the local facilitating. They do home visits. So they go and check on the students and make sure that things are not um, happening at home that are, are deeply affecting their education. And if there is, how we can help. And uh, yeah, I cannot speak um, enough about how amazing they are. Cool. Very cool. Any other questions? Well, th thank you, Emily. Uh, I, I want to remind everybody uh, to, uh, if, if you enjoyed the program, to let us know what you think. Uh, below on the webpage, you'll find our Discuss uh, tool for sharing and, and responding to comments. And I'll, I'll encourage Emily, when, when this, this program is live, to pop back uh, and look at the comments and so she can respond to some of those. Um, for the, the members and Rotarian guests who are watching this, uh, please make sure to fill out the attendance section too. It helps us know uh, that our efforts are reaching you and also allows uh, if you need to make up for a missed meeting. Uh, and if you put your email address in that, uh, you'll get a message that you can pass along to your club secretary. Uh, as always, I'd like to give the final word over to our speaker, Emily. Thank you again um, so much for having me and it was an honor to share our program with you and uh, I just want to thank you for all that you guys do. I know that um, you are very aware of all of the needs in the world so I'm just honored to have been given a platform to share ours and uh, any questions that you have please send them over. I'll give you my direct contact info and uh, I look forward to staying in touch and uh, and just I'm thankful that I get to share about the need in Guatemala and how even the smallest gift can, can impact us. So thank you so much. And I hope you guys have wonderful holidays. Thank you. Take care. Thanks.